imagine, if you will, getting the message from God through an angel. That's what happened to John on the island of Patmos. And today we're going to look at the purpose and blessing of the book of Revelation. Okay, it's an exciting book. Have you ever thought, for example, during the millennium, for a thousand years, if you're a believer, you're going to be there in a resurrected body, okay? Uh, a glorified body. And you're going to be involved in, in ministering with the Lord Jesus Christ in a variety of different capacities. If you want to learn about all that, and it's exciting because a lot of people, well, you know, my life's over, I don't have a future. Hey, you can plan for that time. Okay? But today you're going to get a blessing if you'll just stay with me here. Okay? Revelation promises a blessing for those that read it, hear it, and does what it says. So I'm going to read the few verses we're going to look at, and if you hear it, you're going to get a blessing. Okay? Okay, so let me, let me back up here, just kind of give you the big picture, and I'll fill everything in. Okay. The first two messages I did on Revelation, and if you haven't seen them, you can always go to my timeline and find them, or you can go to YouTube, and I have Introduction 1 and 2. Uh, please share this message with others, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, by all means, do that. Okay? In 95 AD... John was on the island of Patmos, probably working at mines. We don't know. But he was on the Lord's Day. He was in the Spirit. And he gets this vision. This took place, if you look here on this timeline, from here back is the Old Testament period. And then Jesus came on the scene. He did his 33 year. Uh, for 33 years he lived, and, it, and for three years he did his ministry. He died on the cross, uh, and then he ascended into heaven. When he did that, the Holy Spirit came in a way that was different and sealed believers into what's called the body of Christ. This book was written right at the beginning of the church period of time, probably about 50 years after it started. And it's Jesus addressing the seven churches about things that are going to happen quickly. Okay? And so what we have here, that's where he wrote it. And then, then you're going to have the church period of time. Then you have the rapture, seven years of tribulation, which comprises from 3 to 18 to the bulk of the book of Revelation, then 18 to 22. Okay, let me read to you the first three verses. You're going to get a blessing if you see who reads, hear, and does. So if you hear, you can get it. The revelation of Jesus Christ. A revelation, apocalypse, or whatever it means, a revealing. Something you're going to be told that you didn't know, okay? Revelation is God disclosing to man what he would otherwise not know. Write that down. That's the definition of revelation. Okay, so he's going to tell us, he wants to tell us, because it's an open book of what's going to happen in the future, okay? And it's a revelation of the main subject of Jesus Christ, Okay, which God gave him to show his bondservants, the church, the things which shall shortly take place. He sent and communicated it by his angel to his bondservant, John. God got it, gave it to Jesus, Jesus gave it to the angel, the angel gave it to John. John is now writing it to the church. Okay? Who John, who bore witness, speaking of John, to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. 
Blessed is he who reads. Bless it. So I'm going to get blessed if I read. And those who hear, you're going to get blessed if you hear the words of the prophecy. Okay? It doesn't say the words of some Joe Blow or some person claimed to be an, an apostle or some false prophet or fraud, but of this particular prophecy of the book of Revelation. Okay, you want a blessing? Don't go listen to those people. Come to the book of Revelation. Okay. And heed the things that are written in it. And heed. So you do. Okay. And then it says, for the time is near. Okay, so let me go back here. In verses 1 to 3, we have the subject, the purpose, and blessing. The subject. The subject of the whole book of Revelation is Jesus Christ. Okay, we're going to see his person, his power, and his program. We look at his person. You see Christ in eternity. Okay, as you read through the Bible. You see him as the pre-incarnate Christ in the Old Testament. We see Jesus as he took on humanity when he was born in Bethlehem through Mary, his mother, and raised by Joseph. We see him doing his public ministry. We then see him being crucified and ascending into heaven. We also see him, as we're going to see, that Christ is walking among the churches. Okay? You attend the church, Jesus knows everything that's going on in there. Everything. He's present in his body. Okay? We're going to see him present then in the tribulation, in the millennial, and finally at the end. The purpose of Revelation is to see Christ in glory. Okay? That's in chapter 1 in his churches. Okay? He's sovereign over his churches. That means he's still in control. He knows what's going on, and he addresses them very diligently. We're going to see him in, not only in glory, but also in the church, in the tribulation, 318. Here he's going to be there in judgment as he judges all the nations and those that are resistant to him. We're also going to see him in the millennial as the king, as he fulfills the Davidic covenant. Then at the end, we're going to see him at the white throne judgment, where we're going to see him as a judge. Okay. So, Christ is the subject and theme of the whole book of Revelation. Revelation is a consummation. It's a consummation of the whole Bible. Okay, you have in the beginning uh, Jesus talking about his creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And that let us create man in our image and all that. He, you have that in the beginning. Then at the end, you have, don't let anybody add to this book or take away from this a tremendous warning. It's a finish. It's a bookend. It's complete. The Bible is complete. So Revelation is a consummation that ties it all together. Okay, so as we go through this book, all the loose ends are going to be tied and pulled together so we can understand his prayer. What does Jesus want? He wants a relationship with us. Okay, he wants that and, he's, and he does it all through history in a variety of different ways to try to get man to come into a personal relationship with him. It's always done by faith. In the Old Testament, they will look forward to the coming Savior. Since the Old Testament, we look back on the coming Savior. Okay? In the Old Testament, they got saved on credit. In the New Testament, it's already been paid for you know, in advance. Take advantage of it. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So you have a blessing in verse 3 for those that read the book. Those that hear it and those that does what it's time. And the key term in there, you may want to circle it, 
it says here, for the time is near. Now what does that mean? It means this, when it happens, when the rapture comes, these events are going to happen in very quick succession. Boom, boom. That may happen today. You want to hear an interesting thing? Look on the chart with me. Let's say, and I'm going to go hypothetical, okay, that you're right here and you're not a believer. At the rapture, all believers are taken out. All the possessing, not the professing. There's a lot of people that claim to be Christians, but they're really not. Jesus knows who are his. He says, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, and they hear my voice. And when the rapture comes and he calls them, they're going to meet them in there. Okay? Now, let's say that you are right here. You're not a believer. You enter into the tribulation. By chance, and the odds are slim to none. You stay alive through this period of time. And during this time, you put your trust in Christ. You then enter into the millennium. So if the rapture was to occur today, potentially some people that are alive on earth are going to live a long time because during the, during the millennial, Jesus is on earth and people, some people are going to die. So a lot of people are going to live a really long life. Okay? Who goes into the millennial? Only believers, not unbelievers. If you don't come to know Christ as your Savior during the tribulation, you're going to stand before the white throne judgment someday and you're going to spend eternity in hell. Okay, so we're going to go through all this in great detail, but I just wanted you to see this big picture. I want you to understand that the subject of the book of Revelation is Jesus Christ. We're going to see his person through here. We're going to see him in a number of different ways as a consummation of the completion of the Bible. Uh, you're not going to see him as a little lowly servant as he did when he came on the scene in Israel. You're going to see him coming as a mighty warrior, as a king, with a lot of power. Okay, he's going to show his power over everything. People, he's going to show his power over objects. He's going to show his power over life and death. Okay, he's going to exemplify that he is God. Man, that gets me, that gets me excited. Okay. We, 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 so you need to understand, you're also going to see his, his person, his power, his program. What has been his program throughout the ages? Okay, he has a plan. He does things purposely. Okay, and that's why it says that God loves it, that when we do all things in order. I hate chaos. Chaos is from Satan. And that's what he loves to do, create confusion and chaos. I, I go in people's home right away, first thing I notice is whether they have an orderly home or not. Now, I'm not talking about perfection, but I, I mean that they're not so, uh, life is in such disarray. A lot of people live their lives that way. They don't reflect God very uh, well as an ambassador when their life is in, the, they don't have any sense of purpose. They, they're doing something over here, something over there, something over here, something there. They got a lot of irons in the fire, but they're really not making a difference anywhere because they're not focused. God wants us to be focused. He has a plan for our lives. He has a purpose for our lives. First and foremost is to have him as our Savior, to be filled with the Holy Spirit so he can work for us and through us, to do his will for all eternity. Okay. Now, so we need to understand the time is near. Revelation is the consummation. At the end, Jesus is going to be the judge, and he's going to destroy three things forever. Satan, sin, and sinners. 
By sinners, I mean those that are not covered by the blood of Christ, because we're all sinners. Okay. Here's what I would advise you to do. Get a notebook. Get some colored pencils. My Bible's loaded in colors, okay? Read through chapter one. Just chapter one. The next time I get into this, I'm gonna show you the outline of the Bible and it's put right in the Bible here in Revelation chapter one. Then we're gonna to go to chapters two and three and Jesus is gonna address his seven churches. Then we're gonna get into the tribulation and I'm gonna to explain to you all the different judgments, all the different symbolism, all the different things that take place and in the middle of the time, right here, where the Antichrist commits the abomination of desolation. He sets himself up to be God and in order to worship him, uh, in order to buy or sell, you have to worship him or receive the mark of the beast. Listen, I'm, I got to say this. Last night was the Oscars. How important do you think that is? I have never watched the Oscars. I could care less what awards those people present to themselves, okay? Is acting a skill? Yes. But we need to understand these are actors. They, port they pretend to be somebody or something that they are not. Is there other skills involved in acting? Yes. Makeup, stage development, and all this. But you got to take it for what it is. What's happened is people have taken these Hollywood figures or athletes at superstores and they put them on a pedestal. Okay? And then they start to listen to them as they give their ideology in there. For the majority of Hollywood, is very anti-Christ. I'll tell you, at the end time, a lot of those people are going to be there. I have people bragging and, and putting stuff all on Facebook. I'm reading all this stuff. Oh, so-and-so should have won Oscar. And bragging on Christians. Listen, if you're a Christian, you watched Oscar last night, shame on you. If you're promoting Oscar, double shame on you. Okay? You should be promoting the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, are there some good movies out? Yes. Okay, but you need to take it with a grain of salt. Okay? I rarely, rarely have seen a movie that was, that was promoted and uh, produced that accurately portrayed Christianity in, a, in, a, in the light that is true. Okay, so, you know, you, you, you have to, when you read the Bible and you study it and you understand it, but more important, you're not just getting to know the Bible, the contents of it, theologically and doctrinally, but you're coming to know with the author. And then you see these things, and right away, if you've got any discernment or wisdom, you can recognize the difference. If not, you're going to embrace it, endorse it, publicize it. Okay. I'd rather read about how the Lord is blessing you in your devotional life, in witnessing, and how you're overcoming sin, how you're uh, making a difference and glorifying the Lord Jesus. This is the sort of stuff I like to read, okay? Uh, what Lady Gaga does and all these different Hollywood actors, you know, they don't impress me at all. They don't impress God at all. I mean, that little lonely old lady that's sitting at home alone and she's got her Bible and her journal and she's a prayer warrior. That's how I got here. But that's what impresses God. We're small, He's great. We have to decrease, He has to increase. Okay, I think of myself as nothing. Because apart from Christ, I can do nothing. Okay, and during the day that goes by, that somewhere or another, I don't get humbled. 
And, and then I have to turn to God and say, well, God, thank you uh, for holding me up and bringing me to the place where you want me to be. I'm so grateful for you and thankful. God bless you all. I'm going to try to do two or three of these a week. And uh, so if you follow along with me, we're going to go through the whole book of Revelation. Because I want to be blessed too. Have a great day.